اهلا وسهلا احنا في الاردن هاي واتس اب وير سم اف اي ستودنتس اي ام دانييل ذس از والد اون فيديو كاميرا سي هاي والد هاي And right now, we're just doing some raw documentary footage of what FIE students do in their spare time when they're in Amman. Right now, we're walking on Rainbow Street. Rainbow Street is easily the most touristy part. Anyway, right now, we're walking to Souk Jara, which is uh, the single most touristy souk in Amman. It sells handicrafts for obscene prices, but we're going there just because some of the stuff is genuinely beautiful. And they also have the best watermelon kiwi juice you can find in Jordan. I kid you not. So that's where we're going right now. See you when we get there. So as we're walking around, it just seems appropriate that we record some of Amman's uh, institutions. So right here on Sharia Rainbow is the single best falafel place in all of Amman. And it's El Quds Falafel, right? I mean, it might not look like much, but... You can't to the book by its cover. No, you can't, absolutely not. And speaking of another of Amman's institutions, there's a yellow taxi. Walt and I will be taking that in the future to get to El Quds Falafel. But this place serves falafel with special bread, with special sauce, that completely spoils you if you're just used to this stuff in the States. Which, quite frankly, is just... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, don't eat that after you go to El Quds. Also, I would like to take note of another Amman institution. Here, check it out. See that spire? That's a minaret. More comments on what exactly those are and what they do forthcoming. Yep, so here we are coming into Souk Jara. This is Wal. And it's me, Mohammed Ajabar, and I'm in Somali. I kid, I kid. I'm, uh, we're here in Juksara, uh, in Amman. And you're going to see some awesome Amman culture. You said Juksara. What's that? You said Juksara. Souk Jara, sorry. <laughs> oh, you're going to see some awesome Amman culture, some great food, some cool arts and crafts, all kinds of cool things. They give you a good taste of Amman. Well, if you've noticed, it's basically bric-a-brac, Amman style. So you've got some coins, some of which are almost undoubtedly fake. You've got some genuinely nice kafiyas, check it out. And the little kafiya dresses as well. Not as nice as yours, though. What's this? So not as nice as yours. <laughs> Look at that well, beauty. Purchased a little bit down the street. Another Jordanian institution. Up in front of me, I've got a truck making a water delivery. But it's necessary. The vast majority of houses in Jordan don't have direct fresh water delivery. Instead, they buy it on a weekly basis. The water is put into tanks on top of the houses and it then flows downwards, the water pressure being gravity created. So, that's what you're seeing there. Water is fairly expensive and it's always in short supply. Hence, you tend to do washing only during days when you've just had water delivered to ensure that you don't run out of water when you're washing your clothes. Now granted, this made Walt and myself experience a, an unusual situation when we arrived here. Walt, do you want to talk about the zero point? Oh yeah, so Daniel ran out of clean boxers and socks, so kind of ran into an emergency issue or emergency uh, situation where we had to go to the supermarket and buy some uh, cheap, uh, what do you call it, detergent, and escape from point zero, aka every man's uh, nightmare in a foreign country. But we're alive and well, so go to men. I mean, we're in the Middle East. We're smelling good. Is uh, pretty pretty damn important. All right, we've arrived at Souk Al Juma. It is the single largest market in Amman, and it's here that you can buy a lot of practical stuff. You can buy secondhand backpacks, you can buy shoes. In fact, that's what I'm going to try to buy here. I'm going to try to buy a pair of sandals for the house. Oh, me too. That's like a good idea. Yeah. Maybe it's never mind. <laughs> yeah, well. Bad idea. <laughs> we'll see if we can get any good bargains. Inshallah, as the Jordanians say. Ahlain, Daniel, what'd you just buy? I just bought some shoes for inside the house, so. I got these things. 43, 44. Basically, crock ripoffs. From China. <laughs> imported. <laughs> Guess how much I paid for them? Ahlain, Kefalek! Ya Basha. Mr. Ahmed. And uh, Sayyid Ahmed. And Bin Masr. Oh. Anyway. Mash uh, Shadarita. Alright. Shadarita Haig. 
as they say. Wanted it for five, got it for four. Shouldn't have paid more than two, but oh well. I'm happy. <laughs> so Daniel, is this safe to be in here? Oh, incredibly. I mean, of course, you, you, you're smart and you travel with the buddy system. Now you keep that in mind. Yeah. You go to a place like this, everyone's friendly. I mean, you just As we saw, just experienced, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You, and guys just come up to you, they're willing to talk to you. I mean, you do have to take sensible precautions. <laughs> but just like anywhere, you gotta use your head, be logical. Yeah, well, that's how it goes. Thank you for your wise words. Here we see Walt engaging in the ongoing quest to find his friends <laughs> some sort of necklace, like the one they gave him. Exactly. Walter, what is the most important lesson you've learned since coming to Jordan? Oh. You gotta be sensible and open-minded toward other cultures. Just because something's different doesn't mean it's wrong. How about so, some specific examples of this? Well, when we first got here, we learned that you uh, can't flush toilet paper down the toilet. You gotta put it in a bin. Disgusting? Different? I say different. Pick your poison. Just don't drink it. Hello, what's happening? Alright, so we're in a taxi heading back to Wasgatel, and Daniel just bought some dates. We had to negotiate pretty hard. So I'd like to ask him how, what, what he said to the guy in order to get this price down so low. Right, well, first thing you gotta do when bargaining with prices, well, let's know what the appropriate price is that a local would pay for. So you either go to a local suit that has a fixed price, or you ask the person with whom you're staying. So I knew that what the guy was asking for for half a kilo, uh, one dinar and a half. So one dinar and 50 piastres was too high because I had already bought half a kilo for 75 piastres. He was still better. He was buying dates, FYI. Yeah. So, I told the guy that, bargained it down. He let me taste the dates. We agreed that these were higher quality. So, we got them for a dinar for half a kilo. Not bad deal. Yeah. Not bad. Plus, if you know Arabic pretty well like Daniel does, it always helps. I know, Sure. Whoa! Ibtisim! Ibtisim, smile! You're in Jordan. Well, it's been a day and a half for us exploring the souks. I'd say Walt and I have had a pretty good adventure. We got some cheap shoes and dates and... Hey, you know a little Arabic? It's not that hard to have a great time. And I'm mad. Uh, Should have had a real date. Bah! Hush, Walt. Yeah, it's supposed to be a great date. So we're on the way to Madaba, Mount Nebo, and the Dead Sea. We just stopped to get some water. Fairly nondescript place. Catch you again when we actually get there. at a place this geography just kind of makes me speechless. There's not really much I can say. You have to come out here and experience this for yourself. <laughs> 